Our world and beyond. Space, in partnership with the European Space Agency. Yuri Gagarin invited us all into space. He paved the way to the stars. He opened a new chapter in the history of mankind. Yuri Alexevich Gagarin was born in a very simple peasant family. His parents worked on the collective farm and the family had four children. During the Second World War, there was an episode that Yuri often recalled. A Soviet pilot was shot down over their occupied village, and Yuri and other boys rescued the pilot and were hiding him from the Nazis, until a friend picked him up on another plane. This episode deeply influenced him, and ever since he really wanted to be a pilot, was eager to learn new devices and machines, and did everything to make his dream come true. So he entered military flight training at a pilot school and graduated with honors. Yuri and I, we had a reputation as light-hearted pilots. During some lectures, we played battleships. <laughs> Clearly, we were very much alike in our nature. Even now, when I close my eyes, I see his face, so Russian, so bright, his light brown hair, his big blue eyes shining like emeralds, and the smile, that immediate smile on his face. When home, my father was the same simple, charming, kind and cheerful man as he was known to other people. Whenever he could, he was giving us all his time. He read us books, helped us with our homework. He liked to take us on all kinds of trips. In short, he was such an animated person that it was pretty difficult for him to stay home. It's clear that it was the era of confrontation, the race between the two camps, and the Soviet Union was trying to show the world its achievements, technical and political. Until then, only dogs and chimpanzees had been in space. It was necessary to launch a man, to demonstrate that a person could be in orbit for a while, and to return alive and safe on Earth. I was very lucky to be part of the group that designed the Vostok spacecraft. They were not just important engineers and scientists, they were true visionaries who believed in the manned exploration of space and planets as their ultimate goal. They were eager to move in that direction. The cosmonaut was selected from a great number of volunteers, three and a half thousand, I think, 
all jet pilots. The top 20 passed initial training, then a group of six men were selected for the first division. And finally, the one, Yuri Gagarin, was chosen to make the first space flight. It's like dressing a man in a suit and shoving him into a blast furnace, saying, don't be afraid, the suit will protect you. But nobody knows for sure if it will actually protect you or not. It's exactly the same thing here. Don't worry, everything will be fine. We just don't know what exactly it'll be. It's up to you to tell us when you return. It's a known fact. The flight lasted 108 minutes, nine minutes for the orbit insertion, then a single orbit around the Earth. Compared to modern achievements, it seems, well, big deal. Just one orbit. We now fly for months on the International Space Station. But it was the first time man flew into space, and that's what Gagarin's achievement is about. All he had to do was to make some radio conversations and try some food. He had the first space meals aboard. The goal was to see if a man can feel and act normally when weightless. He didn't actually get to pilot the spacecraft, although he had all necessary controls to conduct a manual descent and landing. That was in case the automation was out of action. All the people were truly, truly jubilant. In our design studio, we celebrated this joyful event massively. I went out in the center of Moscow and found it full of crowds, all dancing, singing, laughing. I asked, what's all the joy about? Girls ran by saying, where have you been all this time? Gagarin returned from space. And only then I realized the scale of what had happened. Until then it didn't seem extraordinary. It was just work for us. After his flight, my father became more serious, more restrained in formal settings. But in an unofficial context, he always remained very friendly, happy to answer everyone's questions. I should say I even feel somewhat uncomfortable in front of my friends that my flight lasted only an hour, 48 minutes. <clears throat> but this, of course, was only the beginning, only the first scouting of space. During my flight, Yuri was watching and helping me. When our automatic landing system failed, it was Yuri Gagarin who called us and said, you're authorized to perform manual return, you know how to do it. Easy for him to say when nobody had ever done that before. Gagarin strived to fly again. He was training to pilot one of the first Soyuz spacecraft. He wanted to test that ship, and I think if fate had been different, he would have made many more flights. Gagarin, 
Like all cosmonauts, Gagarin was dreaming about more space flights after his return. So he was training for that, and his exercises included piloting fighter jets. There are several versions of what happened during that training flight. Ones that Gagarin and his co-pilot hit a trail of a supersonic aircraft and their jet went spinning out of control. Or they may have been unable to assess the altitude of their flight correctly. In fact, the plane crashed into the ground and they died. We thought he had ejected. We were searching for him all night, in vain. And only in the morning did we find the fragments. And when I saw the birthmark, I said, no need to look any further. I know him. There were accusations, of course. How could the first cosmonaut be allowed to take such risks? But as they say, eagles need to fly. He was one of those who discovered a whole new world for us, for all of humanity. He was the exemplary man of that era, the model of his time.